In today's episode, we finish up the work on Kyle's Hyper Adobe Tiny Home and he'll be moving in. The shower enclosure has the waterproof membrane installed and we're ready for tile. I'm doing a dry fit first. I'm piecing everything in and getting it all cut and ready before we use any mortar. The two square edges are pretty easy, but going around that radius and around the center drain is a little more challenging. Our little granddaughter came over to inspect and it looks like it meets her approval. Kyle opted for a ceramic tile, which is really hard wearing, and fairly large pieces for a floor tile and an, in a good neutral color. It'll just make it easy to install and it'll wear well and go well in the home. Since these tiles are a little bigger, they're kind of a medium sized floor tile, I'm able to use this little saw here to cut them. I can support the tile on either side as I'm cutting it and I'm just marking the radius and following it around. The tiles that we used in our shower base were really small. They're about the size of a penny. And so you couldn't hold on to them or use them in a saw like this. And so I had to use snippers on those. So using a little bit larger tile here definitely made the process a lot easier. I'm just finishing up the cutting for the dry fit here. Once I have the entire floor done and it's all in place, I'll number all the pieces before I take them out. And then I'll be ready to start the mortaring process. And now the tiles are all mortared in and I'm just removing some of that excess mortar from between the cracks. Next up, I need to tile the curb. We'll be using some white tiles that we had left over from the shower installed in our house. And here you can see I have the shower head and faucet installed. We let that dry for a day or two and now I'm putting in the grout. We're using a light gray unsanded grout for this. I start by globbing generous amounts of grout all around and then work it into the cracks with this rubber grout float. It has a soft base and you can really press hard and work it into the cracks. You want to make sure the cracks are completely filled and there's plenty of material in there. I use special care around the edges to make sure those are completely filled and kind of radiused into the wall and I'm also doing the curb while I'm at it. I then use the float to remove the excess material and after it's dried for a little bit I use a rag to wipe it down gently being certain not to remove too much material. We'll go over it again with a sponge tomorrow. And now we're collecting the metal that we'll be using for the walls of the shower stall. We had some extra material and scrap pieces left over from the exterior of our house and we'll be using those in the shower stall for Kyle's shower. We were able to piece together almost enough metal to do the job. We just had to buy one piece of corrugated metal from the store. We'll also be covering the outside of the shower divider wall with metal. This is a bit of an eclectic mixture of different colors and profiles of paneling, but we think it'll work. This is the piece of corrugated metal that we already had, but we didn't have quite enough, so we had to buy one more piece from the store. As you can see, it doesn't quite match, but it's pretty close. It's a little shinier than the other piece was. I'm getting started by taking some measurements. We're going to be covering the outside of this little divider wall first. And Kyle is on the inside, and he's applying some sealer to the grout. He ended up putting on four or five thin coats. Getting ready to cut the first piece of metal here, and this is a scrap piece that we had left over from our home, and we ordered it, and it was called Smokestack Gray, and it came in looking more blue-green, so it's not what we were expecting. We ended up really loving the color, and it goes well in the environment here. It kind of blends into the blue hues of the mountains around us, but it wasn't what we were expecting, but we love it. Anyway, we used a nibbler to cut across there, make that cut over the ridges. The nibbler's a really handy tool for this, and we're ready to install it. This piece was a fairly straightforward cut. We just had to cut the top to match the slope of the roof, as the roof is sloping up from this side. I wanted it to be a nice tight fit, so we didn't have to try to do anything with trim up at the top, and it looks like it's really close. It's going to work great, so we're going to go ahead and screw it in. For this last piece, I didn't have a scrap piece that was big enough to do it all in one shot, so I had to piece in two smaller pieces to cover this last section. I also wanted to cut a profile along this last piece so that it followed the contour of the wall, and so that's what I'm doing here, trying to make it follow as closely as possible to the earth bag wall. I was able to follow that contour pretty closely, and so no trim will be required. Pretty happy with how it turned out, and so now I'm ready to screw it all in. We had plenty of screws left over from our home build as well.
This next piece will be putting on the other side of the wall, which has the faucet, so I'm cutting the holes for the faucet and shower head. And now we're bringing it in to see if it fits. We've also already installed the corrugated metal around the rest of the shower stall. We decided that the corrugated metal would work best to follow the radius wall around since it flexes easily. And I was able to attach the corrugated metal to those furring strips that I had put on earlier. I was able to install the corrugated metal right up next to the roof and follow the slope of the roof so that we don't have a very big gap there and we don't need any trim along the top in the shower stall. The corrugated metal that we already had was almost enough to do the shower stall. We just needed about a foot of the off-colored corrugated tin that we bought from the store and you can see that on the right side. And it looks like this piece is fitting in nicely, fitting in around the faucet, so we're putting a few screws in to hold it in place. We also have padding on the base so that we don't mess up the tile while we're walking in there. I used silicone to seal the seams between all of the sheets, so everything is nice and sealed up in the shower stall. I just had one more thin strip to put on, so I'm putting the last few screws in that, and that finishes up the metal in the shower stall. It's getting hot outside, and so Kyle is starting to move in. Here he is working on hanging a decorative wall covering, and he's dealing with the challenge of trying to figure out where and how to attach things when you have an earthen wall like this. He ended up attaching it to the ceiling because it had furring strips that he was able to use to nail into. He has these nice tapestries of jungle scenes that he was using in his RV as window coverings, and he wanted to hang them up in here. I decided to put a couple of pieces of trim on the end of this wall. It's just a 2x4, but with a couple of pieces of wood trim, it looks really nice, and they cover up that metal transition. We had some scrap cutoff pieces from trimming down 2x4s that worked out perfect for this trim. It's been nice to be able to use so much scrap and leftover materials in the shower stall. It's really reduced the cost. Kyle's pretty brave about trying new things, and he likes being frugal and reusing things, and so he was willing to try something really bold and different on the shower stall, and we're really pleased how it turns out. It has a really nice look, and we think it'll function perfectly. Overall, the shower stall presented a lot of unique challenges, and we are pretty intimidated by it. It had that radius wall, and we were doing it on the earth bag walls, and weren't quite sure how to approach it, but we just looked for frugal solutions and ended up going with the metal to follow the radius. Anyway, it turned out very well. It's unique, it's beautiful, and it should be very functional. Kyle turned on the hot water and we're testing it out for the first time. This is going to be quite a luxury for him. This will be the first time in over two years that he's had a hot shower in his home. April is working on painting the windowsill. She's using that same blue paint that Kyle used on the eaves, and I'm giving Kyle a hand moving in some items. Kyle is using kind of an open cabin type design, and he's finding that he has plenty of room for everything. He has his bed up against the far wall, and still has plenty of room on the side for a full-size computer desk and office chair. And he's just starting to bring over his stuff and get ready to move in. He has plenty of storage in those shelves over on the one side and has quite a bit of storage underneath the bed as well. I'm doing some measuring for a headboard for the bed. We decided that since the bed will be up against the wall, didn't want the pillow rubbing on the wall. So I decided to make a simple functional headboard real quick. April is finishing up the paint on the window and doing some touch-up paint on the door while I'm finishing up the headboard. I was able to build it with materials that we already had on hand. Once the headboard was done, we decided to go ahead and paint it blue so it matched everything else. And now we're going to start working on the kitchen. We're bringing in the countertop for a test fit. This is an 8-foot piece of countertop, and we'll be using the entire thing. We'll have it offset to one side, the side that Kyle's on. That'll cover his dishwasher and leave a little bit extra as well. I will need to build a brace to support it on that side. The next step is to cut out the hole for the kitchen sink. So I'm laying it up there and starting to get it situated and traced out so I can cut that hole. The kitchen sink was a bit of an oddball size. We had to special order it online because we needed it to fit in this cabinet, which is actually a bathroom cabinet. And so it's a little smaller and different size than a typical kitchen sink cabinet. And we needed a very specific sink, but we were able to find one online that was the perfect size and made full use of the kitchen cabinet space that we had. 
After a lot of careful measuring and double and triple checking, I'm getting started on cutting this hole out. It's always nerve wracking because you only get one shot at this and you really don't want to mess it up. So I measured and checked so many times and I'm finally going for it. I started by drilling out the corners and then finished up with a hand circular saw to cut out the rest of the material. And now we're carrying it back in carefully now because we don't want to break it. It's definitely a lot weaker with that big chunk cut out of the middle and we'll do a test fit. We set it in place and then put the sink in to make sure that the sink fit properly in the hole that I cut and that's all looking pretty good. So now we need to remove everything and do the final prep on the cabinets so that we can glue the top down to the cabinets. I determined that I first needed to cut a piece out of the back of the cabinet to make room for the faucet. Once that was done, I applied some construction adhesive to all the edges on the cabinets to glue the top down. Next, we set the sink in place and I'm getting ready to go ahead and put silicone around the edge and put it in permanently. Before I do that, I put tape all around the edges right up against the metal and that tape will serve to keep the silicone from squishing out past the sink edge. Next up, I'm putting in a board to support the edge of the cabinet and box in the dishwasher segment. While I'm working on that, Kyle and April are looking at the shower curtain in the bathroom and also installing a curtain on the front door. And now we're bringing in the finished headboard and installing it behind the bed. This will work perfect to keep his bedding and pillow from rubbing up against the earthen walls. And now back to installing the kitchen sink. I'm almost ready to put it in, but before I do, I want to go ahead and install the drain and the faucet. It's a lot easier to access now than later. I'll go ahead and install the drain first. I've done this fairly recently on our house, and so I feel like I'm at the point where I really don't need to carefully read the instructions. I've kind of got it memorized and can pretty well just work through it by myself. Having recently done it in our house really helps. I decided to go ahead and take it outside so I could get a better grip on it with the pliers and kind of move it all around and work on it without worrying about scratching up the countertop. Next up, I'll install the faucet also while it's not in the countertop. So much easier to do it while it's up here and not having to crawl underneath the sink to access it. These new faucets are also super easy to install. It just all of the plumbing comes through that one hole and there's quick connects. It all goes together really fast. Kyle wanted a tall modern faucet with an extendable spray nozzle. So this faucet fit the bill. With everything installed, I brought it in for one more test fit just to make sure that the faucet and everything fits in behind there. I had to cut out a little recess in the back of the cabinet. I want to make sure I've got good clearance all around and there's not going to be any issues. It looks like it's fitting okay, so I removed it one last time, and then next I'll put in the silicone and put it in permanently. I put in a generous bead of silicone all around the edge. This tape is really nice. It shows me where to put the silicone, and I can put it on really generously, and I know it'll squish out, but it'll squish out onto the tape where it's easy to clean up and remove. I also went ahead and applied some to the underneath lip area of the sink just to make sure I have plenty of silicone and we get a good seal all the way around. And now it's time to carefully lower it into position. Try not to get silicone all over the fingers. Kind of set it in place, settle it down, and we're starting to wipe up some of the excess silicone. Once the excess silicone was cleaned off, I got underneath the sink in order to apply the retaining clips. Those are always difficult to install. You have to lay down and reach up underneath the cabinet and it's always difficult to access the underneath of a kitchen sink cabinet. Anyway, it's a dreadable part of the process, but in the end I was able to get the clips on and get it tightened down real nice. Next, we made all the plumbing connections and we're trying it out and it looks like it's working well. I decided to go ahead and check for leaks and fortunately didn't find any. And now to finish up the work on these kitchen cabinets. This one on the side needed a shelf installed, so I had to do a little cutting on the shelf and install the clips, but I got that done. The shelf fits real nice. And then I'm moving over to the kitchen cabinet now and the door still needed to be installed on that. I was able to put them back pretty much in the same place they came out of, just put the screws back in the old screw holes and that fit pretty nice with some minor adjustments. Kyle is continuing to move in. Here he is hanging up another tapestry. April also sewed up one of the tapestries and made it into a curtain for the front door. 
With the inside essentially done, we've decided to do some work on the outside. It needed quite a bit of cleaning after the construction process, and so we've been cleaning up the area, removing tools and equipment, and now we're doing some grading around the home. This grading work, strangely, is something that I've been looking forward to for a long time. I guess essentially because it means that we're nearing the completion of this home. It's one of them kind of landmark things for me. Anyway, I'm doing some digging here. We're working to get a nice slope away from the house all the way around. And I'm doing a little kind of earthwork here to make sure that the water flows nicely around and away from the home. Kyle took the natural water flow on this property into consideration when he located this home. It's in a good location, it's on high ground, and it's built in an area where water doesn't naturally flow. So it just needed the typical grading work with the earth sloped down and away from the house for drainage. Kyle collected some rocks and now we're placing them in kind of a decorative fashion around his front entrance concrete slab. And here's a look at the finished exterior of the home. I really love how this house ended up looking. You never really know, you know, going into it, what the completed look will be, but I love the rounded corners. I love the gray of the stucco with the flat roof, with the colors that he chose. It all just really works well and goes with the landscape. It's a really cool looking place. And a few days later, Kyle's appliances arrived. They were able to deliver out here and he has bought a washing machine, a dishwasher and a refrigerator. Here we are moving the washing machine into place. It's a full-sized version and very energy efficient. And just a quick temperature update. It's about 85 degrees in here, so a little warm, but with the ceiling fan going, it feels very comfortable. I think it's on the other side, kind of in the front, actually. Well, we have all the appliances moved in and we're starting to read through the instructions and figure out how to make all the connections. And here you can see one of the metal shelving units. Kyle decided to put it over here by the cabinets and use it as storage for the kitchen area. We purchased a typical faucet connection kit. It comes with the hoses that you need, as well as a couple 90 degree connectors, so that if your spigot comes out directly from the wall, you can 90 down and you know be able to get your washer moved up closer to the wall. And then it's a relatively simple matter of making those connections. They're just a threaded fitting it's got a rubber gasket seal, so it's really easy to do. Just make those connections on either side and then put the drain pipe down into the drain connection. Well, with the connections made, we're just moving it back into place and it should be all done. You may have noticed that Kyle has installed his shelving unit in the space where his dryer would normally be. And that is because he's decided not to go with a traditional dryer. Traditional dryers either use a lot of power or use propane, and he didn't want to install propane, and so he decided to look for alternatives, and he landed on using a smaller spin dryer. They don't use much electricity, and they don't take up very much space, and they get the clothes almost completely dry and make air drying really fast. But we did make sure that he has plenty of room for a traditional dryer if he decides that he wants to go that route in the future. During the process, a little water got spilled on the floor, and so you can see how that looks on an earthen floor. It's beading, it doesn't soak in, you can just wipe it up with a rag. The linseed oil cures to a very water-resistant layer on the top of the earthen floor, so it works really good. And here I am drilling a hole in the side of the cabinet to run the dishwasher water line and drain through. Then we moved the dishwasher roughly into place, ran those lines through and made the connections under the sink. And then we can move it back fully and get it leveled. That's really important to get it leveled and the right height. Once those adjustments were made, we are ready to finish the installation by screwing it into the bottom of the countertop. I actually didn't have to do as much leveling on this as I thought I might. I was a little worried that my leveling job on that top coat of this earthen floor wouldn't be too great and I'd have to do a lot of leveling. But I got lucky and in this area it's actually pretty good and didn't need much adjusting. The refrigerator was the easiest install, just a little bit of leveling and scoot it into place and it's ready to go. And that pretty much finishes up Kyle's home. It's exciting to get to this point. It's pretty much done. It's just a very basic, simple build. His kitchen is now complete. He's got everything he needs. As we look at the bathroom area, he does intend to put up a curtain area across the bathroom to provide some privacy for the bathroom area, but that's pretty much it and we're all finished up here. We had an 8x10 rug from our last house that we'd been saving for Kyle that we brought over and he put it down in the living room area. It covers up a good part of the floor and provides a nice comfortable walking surface. 
This has really been an unusual build and therefore a really fun build. It's been fun working with Kyle on his place. He has now moved in and is enjoying his new home. April is working on a full build video that will be coming out next. In that video, we will also cover how long it took to build this home, cover some of the details on how it's performing as far as temperature, and also talk about how much it costs to build the home.